family guy who does. I am. So that's really easy to imagine. But imagine I'm a guy on a balance beam. You ready? Ah! How do we imagine it? Oh. Right Never been that close to a fan. Okay, now, now check it out. I want you guys to imagine. Oh, just listen. Listen to me, okay? I want you guys to imagine we're at the Olympics, okay? Now imagine they're on the balance beam, you know, they're... This is cool. You guys ready? I've been practicing all day. You ready? Okay, here we go. And, and this is what this is what they do. They go and they. Oh. <laughs> and this is what they do. And then they do this. They do this. <laughs> Nobody clapped. Listen, listen. Now, imagine that you were at the Olympics and you just seen somebody do that. What would they do? At, to, what would the judges do? Would the judges be like, disqualified? Uh, hold on. Judges would be like, well, uh, that was uh, that was that was amazing. Uh, would they say, well done? No. Right, check it out. Chelsea, if you want to just no, listen to me, if you just want to play something soft, I want you guys to listen to me. There's a true story about a guy. This guy, I'll tell you his, I'll tell you his name later. I'll tell you about him later, but I want to tell you his story first. True story. At the age, or no, when he was being born, when he was being born, his mother died giving birth to him. Okay, so his dad, his dad remarried, and at the age of nine, his stepmother was in a very bad car wreck, and she died. At twelve, so his dad remarried again. At twelve years of age, his dad came down with cancer and died. So check this out. At 12 years old, his mama died, his mama's dead, his stepmama's dead, and now his dad's dead. The only person he has left in his family, his, the closest relatives he had, was Uncle George and Aunt Sandra. Well, Uncle George and Aunt Sandra, one day, man, they, they, were, they were just, they, man, they were mad at each other. They began to fight. And it really upset, I mean, Uncle George got really mad. So he actually went to his room, pulled out a gun, put it to Sandra's hand, and pulled the trigger, killed his Aunt Sandra. True story. Took the gun, pulled the trigger, and shot himself. Age 16, he lost everybody. His life was like this balance beam. Everybody say balance beam. His life was shaky. His life was going crazy. And, and can, I want to tell you something. This guy is still alive right now. This guy. No, it's not me. This guy, his name is Francis Chan. Have you ever heard of Francis Chan? He's an amazing. Madison has seen him in person. I've seen him in person. He is an amazing, awesome person. He's a very famous author of many Christian books. He's a preacher that's preached to millions and millions of people. He's a man that, he's an evangelist, and he's got an awesome life. But I told you that story to let you know this, that sometimes we as Christians, people that try to serve Jesus, there's times that our life is like this balance beam. It's just some faint. Everybody say shaky. Shaky. There's some shaky things that come in our lives, isn't there? You remember had some stuff come in your life that shook your world up? And you didn't know which way to go. You didn't know what to do. You didn't, you, it, just began, it just became to come, it just come at you from every direction. And I know it was pretty serious, silly about the Olympic person. But this is what a lot of Christians do. I want to show you tonight. This is what a lot of Christians do. They think, you know what? This is crazy. Man, I've had, I've had all kinds of things happen in my life. I, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do. And all these crazy things you do. You know what, God? I love you, Lord, but I'm just going to... 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here. Listen to me. I'm just gonna sit here and wait. God, I love you. But I'm not gonna go outside because like there's mosquitoes out there that have diseases. So I'm just gonna just gonna stay right here and just enjoy my life and I'm not going to go to school. I'm going to be homeschooled, God, because there's too many bullies at school. And I'm just going to... And when I get a job, God, I'm going to get one of those jobs where I work at home and, and I work off the internet because, because there's some mean people. Like, God, I'm just going to take it easy right here. I, 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 as a matter of fact, God, I love you so much. God, will you please... When I get old, or when I have to die, will you help me please to die in my sleep? That'd be awesome, God. Please help me to die in my sleep. Now I imagine that happens. And all of a sudden you're asleep and you just you wake up and you're in these clouds and you get up and you and you and you're standing before a judge. Guess who that judge is? That judge is God. And, you, and he's going to look at your life. Remember, our life is kind of like this balance beam. And God, you think God's going to say, you think God's going to say, well done? You think God's going to say, well done? Listen, you can take her out and, and, and counsel with her if we want. Mr. Ben, you wanna you wanna just minister to her? Listen to me. We're standing before the judge of life. When we're stand, listen. One of these days, we all will be standing before the judge of life, and he's gonna look at our life. And you think, you know, some of you said, yeah, he's gonna say that, but I really believe that's not. God's not gonna say, well done. That was. Man, you've done some amazing things with your life. I don't. I really believe that God's not going to say, "Well done." And can I tell you something? For a lot of Christians, that's what they want to do. For the majority of Christians, for the majority of Christians, that's the kind of life they want to live. Y'all remember the episode on SpongeBob? Yeah. Where he broke his butt. Yeah. Y'all remember that? We tried to get. I tried. To, we tried to play it, but it wasn't. We couldn't download it on YouTube. But if you remember that story on ep, the episode of SpongeBob where he broke his butt, he got so scared that he says, "I'm going to live the rest of my life in house in my pineapple." <laughs> Listen, and what he do? He had his chip, his tissue napkin, and his penny. Right? And he says, "This is all I need in life." And remember Sandy and Patrick trying to get him to come out and it all it was real actually that was a weird one. A gorilla showed up. Right? But listen. But listen. SpongeBob saved their lives, didn't he? I believe one listen to me. I believe one of these days we're gonna be standing before God. And our life is laid out before him. And one of these days I want him to say, Well done. Good and faithful servant. But I believe if we just live a life that's mediocre, if we just live a life that's, that's, that we don't do anything, if we just live a life and we try to we try to stay inside this shell, God's not going to be happy with that, guys. Why? Because He wants your friends that you go to school with to go to heaven. But if we're wrapped up around our life and, and we're trying to live our life that's that's all closed in and we don't we don't get out there we don't go to Walmart we don't go to we don't go to these places we don't go to the playground there's people in your playground that need to know Jesus are you listening to me there's people in your schools that need to know Jesus and you say why well, don't rap but listen there's some of you go to school every day and you never mention the name of Jesus and you're too you're too ashamed but what a lot of Christians do when they try to serve God when things get shaky and, 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 and they get unstable, they're like this balance beam and they just sit down. And they don't take the risk. Listen to me. 